what often is a moment-to-moment -moment situation when the weather is interfering with the launch of a space shuttle? Let's go back to John Holloman now for an update. Bobby, you've been to Florida, as many of our viewers have. You know how uh, the weather can change just in a matter of seconds. What is happening down on the launch pad there right now is that the astronauts have been told to uh, put their sun visors on in preparation for launch. CNN's John Zarella joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. John, um, what has happened in the past couple of minutes while we were away that made it okay to do this? Frankly, uh, I'm a bit surprised myself at this. I guess the thinking is that it's as good as it's going to be today and that it is not unacceptable that the weather at the landing site uh, may well uh, hold long enough in case there were an emergency and that these clouds that are over the launch site are thin enough that they can get through them without worrying about a trigger lightning strike. John? Yeah, John. Uh, I know that Bob Seek, the launch director there, has remarkable luck with getting shuttles off in uh, just very minuscule holes in the cloud cover over Florida from time to time, and maybe that's what's happening right here. For less than a minute uh, from launch at this point, T minus 45 seconds, and uh, everything aboard the shuttle that's supposed to be running right now is running, and from what everything, uh, everything we've been told from uh, NASA officials, uh, things are ready. We're going to listen to the last uh, 30 seconds of the countdown and watch the shuttle go up. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's four onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12. 10. 9. 8. We have a go for main engine start. 4. 3. 2. 1. 0. And liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia and the first extended duration mission, a stepping stone to space station freedom. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Columbia. Houston now controlling. Columbia's rolled to the proper upside down position, putting the crew with heads down to see the horizon and putting Columbia on course for its planned orbit. engines on board Columbia now throttling back to two-thirds throttle as Columbia prepares to pass through the area of maximum air pressure. Columbia's speed now 1,000 miles an hour. Columbia is two miles east of the launch pad, altitude of 4.8 miles and in a steep climb. Three engines on Columbia, now back at full throttle. Columbia, Houston, go throttle up. Go throttle up. Well, as you can see, Shuttle Columbia has, uh, has passed the point that all of us who have covered space launches in the United One States uh, from, uh, from the Challenger Columbia on pass uh, with great trepidation. It's, uh, it's past the go at throttle up point. It appears to be okay as it uh, continues to blast through the clouds. My colleague John Zarella at uh, the Kennedy Space Center is uh, continuing with us here. John, um, how did it look to you? Well, it was uh, hard to see much once it passed through the clouds. Uh, again, I was a little surprised. The cloud deck was thicker than what the uh, meteorologists, or at least appeared to be thicker than what Air Force meteorologists said uh, was acceptable. But uh, apparently it was thin enough for NASA to give it a shot. John? All right, we can now see the, um, the solid rocket motors on the side of the shuttle as it continues to to move is a, a long distance camera. It's, uh, it's more than five miles away. There are the two solid rocket motors coming off the side of the shuttle. That's also a very welcome sight for those of us who cover this launch. And you can see in the middle of your screen the three main engines, which will continue to burn for, I guess, six and a half more minutes until the shuttle is uh, in orbit. It won't be in its final orbit, 161 miles up at the point the main engines cut off, but it will be going fast enough to be in an orbit and they will do um, another burn of the orbital maneuvering system engines in um, a, a few minutes after the uh, main engines cut out to put it up into orbit. Everybody on the ground at NASA who's, uh, is telling us that Columbia is right on target. Everything's going just as it should so far. 23 miles up in the air. And uh, I have used my stopwatch at the beginning of this launch. Uh, Columbia went from zero to 1,000 miles an hour in 34 seconds. Those of you who are into auto racing can appreciate that, probably. That call indicates Columbia could perform an emergency transatlantic 
landing if needed in case of an engine failure. Three engines remain at full throttle. The scariest part of this mission, according to the astronauts, is now just about over. Uh, they'll be in orbit in uh, less than five minutes, and uh, our coverage of this mission will continue. It's going to be the longest mission to date for the space shuttle, lasting 13 days. Also, News Hour will continue in just a moment. Stay with us. Some of altitude 50 miles, downrange from the Kin Space Center, 90 miles. Current speed, 4,000 miles an hour.